Prepare for the Lord's Return, Five Days in Heaven and Hell by Bernarda Fernandez. This is the testimony of my first journey. As I was not feeling well that morning, my husband refused to leave me on my own and go to work. I told him that I wasn't alone. After he left, I felt that I was dying. So I decided to phone some of my friends and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law answered, Bernarda, God will bless you today. Do not be afraid. The same answer came from another brother in Christ that I phoned, but he added, Bernarda, get up from your bed and praise the Lord. Cry to him and glorify him. So in spite of my lack of strength, I cried to the Lord saying, Lord, you are my strength. Come and help me. I tried to stand up, but my strength left me. My voice could no longer be heard, but in my soul I was crying to the Lord to help me since I was dying. Suddenly, my room was lit up with a light which looked like fire. Immediately my fear vanished, and I saw angels descending and walking in my room. I could hear them clearly speaking to each other, and suddenly a marvelous being appeared, more marvelous than the angels. He was dressed in white with a golden sash. On his chest was written in gold, faithful and true. His face was showing gentleness and love. Jesus the Christ was in front of me, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Blessed be his holy name. Jesus approached me, touched my head and told me, I am Jesus who died for you. Look at these marks in my hands. They are still there for you. I came down from my throne of glory to speak to you. There are many things in your life to put right. You are lazy and quick-tempered. Moreover, I do not want 25% Christian, nor 95% Christian, but 100% Christian. If you want to go to heaven, you have to be holy, as I myself am holy. I came to take you for a journey. I asked him, Lord, is it a missionary journey? He answered, No. Then he took me by my hands and lifted me up and talked to me with simplicity and love. He brought me as far as my windows. He looked at the city of New York and I saw sadness on his face. He wept and said, My word is well preached, but people do not listen. The sin of the city has reached my father. The city was full of homosexuals. Among them were politicians. The Lord told me, It's another Sodom, but I am alive, and the judgments of my father will soon fall on this city. Then I knelt before the Lord while crying, and he told me, Do not be afraid. When judgment falls on this world, my church will no longer be on the earth. He then led me again towards my bed, and he asked me to phone a brother from my congregation. He gave me the name of that then brother. He then asked me to tell him that my spirit would come out of my body and that they should not bring my corpse to the hospital or to any funeral ceremony. Instead, they should tell my husband to trust the one who is the resurrection and the life. John 11.25 references this. The Lord told me again, I who give life, I take your spirit, but you will come back and tell the peoples to trust me fully. The one who believes in me will never die. He stretched his hands and I saw that another body came out of me. I was dressed in white and I was shining like the Lord. He told me, look, this is the body that Christians who obey my word will soon have. I realized that I could go through walls. The Lord who was holding me by my hand said, look. When I turned, I saw my body without spirit. He explained to me that my physical body was worthless, it is nothing but dust, and at death it will become dust again, as any physical body. He added that the new body that I had was a glorious one, which is the spirit he gave to man. I thought he would lead me straight to heaven, but it was not the case. We descended through a tunnel below the earth, and when approaching a certain place I could perceive an unbearable smell. I said, Lord, I don't want to go into that place. But we went in. That place was dark and not worth living. I heard people suffering, weeping, and screaming. When we got to the end of the tunnel, we sat on a rock and the Lord told me, Look! I saw people suffering. In hell, people spend their time crying and no one cares about others. Dear brothers and sisters, I just came to realize that hell is real. I wept and wept, and when I looked at the Lord, He told me, Hold on to what you have seen, and do not forget it. 
I was looking at hell and people were screaming, Ouch! Ouch! It's forever! It's forever! Pain and hatred forever! I turned toward the Lord and asked him, Is there anyone from my family in this hell? He answered me, I will not allow you to see a member of your family. I asked him again, Lord, is there anyone that I know here? Yes, said the Lord, and I will allow you to see him. Suddenly I saw a young man coming from the depths of hell. It was Alexander. I knew this young man at a crusade my husband and I attended in the Dominican Republic. During that cru crusade, I heard a voice saying to me, Get up, go and meet Alexander who's passing by. Tell him not to reject this message, for I'm giving him a last chance. This voice was the voice of the Lord, even though I didn't see him. I told Alexander what the Lord told me. This is how he responded. You Christians are all fools. You deceive people by telling them that Jesus Christ is coming. I, Alexander, do not believe this to be the truth. I told him, Alexander, God lives and he gives life and he takes it away whenever he wants, Alexander. You will soon die. He answered, I'm too young to die. I still have many good years of festivities on this earth. This chance was well and truly the last for Alexander. Dear reader, what do you know about yourself? Three weeks later, Alexander died while he was drunk. His destination was this place of torment where I saw him in hell. The Bible clearly states that no drunkards will inherit the kingdom of God. You can see that in Galatians 5.21. When looking at people in hell, I could see Alexander attacked by two big worms. He was screaming, Ouch! 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 He was tormented. He recognized me and told me, I neglected my last chance. I'm here today suffering. Please, when you return to the earth, go to my house and tell my family to believe in Jesus Christ and to obey his word so that they won't come to this place of torment. Then the Lord showed me thousands of people who were suffering in hell, and he told me, You see, some of these people knew me when they were on the earth. There are still a lot of people on earth who walk on the street without knowing where they go. Know that the way to heaven is very narrow, and it will be even narrower still. There will be difficulties on earth, so that you will be as pure as gold, but fear not, for I am ahead of you like a mighty warrior. I asked him, are these Christians in hell? He answered, Yes, do you know why? They believed in me, but they did not walk according to my word. There are many, those Christians who only behave well when they're in the temple, in front of their pastors and their family, but they are greatly deceiving themselves. The eyes of my Father see everything, and He understands every word, wherever you are. Tell my people that it's time they lived a holy life before my Father, before the devil, and before the world. Let the devil have no right to accuse my people, and let the world not point the finger at my people. It is high time that we sought holiness and consecration. Then we went somewhere where there was a lake of fire. As we were approaching the lake, I perceived a very bad smell, and the Lord told me, What you see there is a lake of fire, which is already prepared for the devil, the false prophet, and the antichrist. I did not prepare this place for men, but all those who do not believe in me as their Savior, and all those who do not live according to my word will go there. At that moment, I saw Jesus weeping, and he told me again, There are too many those who are lost than those to, who go to heaven. Then Jesus showed me the number of people who were dying in a minute, and he told me, Look, look how many are lost. My church is sleeping, despite the fact that she has received my power. She has my word and the Holy Spirit, but she is sleeping. On earth there are people who preach that hell doesn't exist. Go and tell them that this place is real. I was very far from that place, but I could feel the heat. We left the Hades and went to heaven. We kept on going and went to the second heaven. In that heaven, the Lord showed me the sun and the stars, and he told me, Look at these stars. I call each of them by its name. Do you see the sun? It's by my power that it shines both on the righteous and the wicked. But there will come a day when the sun will no longer shine and everything will be darkness. We went further and reached the heaven where God lives. 
there were beautiful houses there. The walls of these houses were very high of pure gold and of precious stones. There were twelve gates of pearl with twelve angels at the gates. I thought I couldn't go in, but the Lord looked at me and said, Do you want to go in? Oh, yes, Lord, I really want to. Then get in, for I myself am the door. At that moment I went in through a precious gate and I saw a garden of magnificent flowers. Do you want to go in the garden? Then go in, for I prepared this for you and my people. I stepped in and I started to pick some flowers and to arrange some bunches. As I was running in the garden like a little girl, the flowers I picked had many colors with a very nice smell. After that, the Lord called someone. It was an angel, strong and so beautiful that I couldn't even describe it to you. The Lord told me, Do you see this one? He is the archangel Michael. He is the one who leads my army. Look again. I saw a mighty army on horses, and the Lord told me, It's not a human army, but my father's. This army is at the disposal of Christians who are really born again. Do not fear, for it is more powerful than the one which is in the world. Then he showed me another angel. This one is the messenger of Christians who obey my word. I was happy to hear that. Jesus told me, Pay attention. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the one who caused fire to fall down from heaven. I have not changed. I am going to show you the condition in which my people live in these last days they've got left. The Lord told me, Be very careful about the things I'm going to show you. I saw Christians who were weak and tired. The Lord asked me this question, Do you believe that I can take this church away in its present state? Then he told me, Christians that I will take away with me will be glorious, triumphant, spotless, blameless. Among my people there are lies, lack of love. My people are divided. I showed you the condition of Christians in these last days. Now I'm going to show you how the early church lived. Those brothers and sisters were filled with the glory of God. They constantly fasted and prayed. They preached my word without any fear. Whereas present Christians think that I've changed, they also think that the Holy Spirit has changed. The big mistake of Christians today is the fact that they live a routine life, planned by humans. Therefore, they've forgotten that the messages are from the Holy Spirit and from above. Tell my servants, the pastors, that the time has come to put behind those routine programs. If they do, you will see the power of God in your midst, the Holy Spirit who is manifest in the early church. He will perform signs and miracles and wonders in great numbers, causing the dead to rise. The Holy Spirit is still the same. It's you who have changed. Christians, it's high time that you came back to the life of the early church. I then left this beautiful garden and went to the lovely street of gold, and the Lord told me, Touch! Yes, it's pure gold. Go and tell my children that very soon they are going to walk on these streets of gold by the hand of the one who gives life. Oh, how great it is to walk on those streets of gold. After that I saw a splendid throne surrounded by angels, archangels, and seraphs. They were continually praising God, the one who was on the throne, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with His glory. Amen. Time has come to lift up holy hands unto me and to praise me. At the same time I saw the river of the water of life flowing from the throne. I also saw the tree of life and at the other end I saw the rainbow and the river of crystal. Then I asked the Lord, Who is on this throne? He answered, It's my Father, the Lord of hosts. I told him, Can I see the Father? No, it's not yet time, the Lord answered. Even though I did not see the Father, the one who was on the throne was mighty. I saw thunder and flashes of lightning coming from the throne, and I heard praises. Jesus told me, Do you hear these praises? These are the praises of those who are redeemed. I saw seven angels, each one of them holding a golden bowl, and seven other angels, each holding a trumpet. Lord, who are these angels? The Lord answered, the seven bowls that the angels hold are filled with the wrath of God. They will soon be poured out, and when the trumpets sound, my church, those Christians who live according to the will of my Father, will be caught up. 
they will no longer be on earth during the great tribulation. Before the Antichrist manifests himself, this man of sin, my church will hear the last trumpet sound and they will meet me in the air. I was there, dear friend, in front of a great throne, and I did not have any notion of time. A moment later, Jesus showed me how his church, the true believers, will be caught up. I saw this in vision, thousands of people disappearing. This happened worldwide, and TV and radio gave the news of the disappearance. Newspapers with big headlines in red also brought out the news. The Lord told me, the news will soon happen. If the judgments of my Father have not yet come upon the earth, it's because of the faithful Christians who really love me. After that, I saw the appearance of the man of sin. He was saying to the inhabitants of the earth, I'm bringing you peace and safety. And immediately people forgot the event that had just taken place. Jesus told me, look carefully. I saw in the vision the seven angels with the seven bulls. Dear friend, what was happening was difficult to describe. I saw the angels pouring out the seven bulls of wrath on the earth. Trumpets started sounding. God was pouring out his judgments on the inhabitants of the earth and the whole country and whole countries disappeared. The Lord told me, "Look, all these people were part of my church and some were even pastors." Because I did not fully understand this, I asked the Lord, "How is it that your people have been left so numerous in the great tribulation? How is it that there are also pastors among them, those who preach your word?" Jesus answered, "Yes, they had preached my word." but they were not living in accordance with my word. Then the Lord allowed me to see another multitude of pastors, he told me. Those pastors were not preaching my word as it is written. They thought that my word was not adapted to their century. They had too much favor towards those who were given a lot of tithes because they were more interested in material prosperity. Go and tell my servants that I am the one who called them, and that silver and gold belong to me, and I give them according to my greatness and glory. Tell them to preach my word as it is written. They are many, there are many, those who give another interpretation to my word. My word is my word, and no one can change it. It must be preached as it is written. There are many among my people who distort my word for their own profit. After that, we entered a lounge in that new Jerusalem, and the Lord told me, What you see is paradise. In paradise, I saw the apostles, and I asked the Lord, Lord, where's Abraham? I was expecting to see an old man, but suddenly I saw a young man, aged about 25, approaching. And Jesus told me, This is Abraham, the father of faith. The Lord called a very beautiful woman with an unspeakable, unspeakable beauty, like all those I saw there, and he told me, this is Mary. Go and tell everyone that Mary is not the Queen of Heaven. The King of Heaven is I, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Go and tell this blindfolded generation that there is no purgatory, for if there was one, I would have shown you. Instead, there is a hell, the lake of fire, the precious Jerusalem, and the paradise which I showed you. But tell them that there is no purgatory. Tell them that it's a lie from the devil and there is no purgatory. Then the Lord led me to a store of crowns. These are crowns of life. The Lord asked me, What do you see? I saw my local church, the believers at that community, singing and preaching. Then I asked Jesus, Why are the names of the believers of my community not written in this book? And he told me, Because of their wrongdoing on the earth. After all this, the Lord allowed me to come back on the earth. Now I'm going to talk about my second journey. One day we were at a prayer meeting. We were 20 in number. As usual, we started by praising and worshiping the Lord. Suddenly we felt the presence of God. It was so powerful as if we were on the day of Pentecost. I remember that my husband's mother, who is well advanced in age and very devoted in the work of the Lord, came to me and said, Bernarda, let's keep the noise down during the praise for we're making a lot of noise. She was right, because the praise was like the sound of a waterfall. As I was about to ask my brothers to keep the noise down, I heard the Lord telling me, Don't say anything. In the world, when people are making noise, nobody cares. Then why should you stop praising me? We then carried on praising and worshiping the Lord, and I felt that something great would take place. Suddenly I remembered what the Lord told me on my first journey. 
I'll come back for you. All of a sudden, I saw a bright light flooding my home. My brothers also saw the light, and they all knelt down before this true and faithful God. I did not know what to do. I just stood still. That light became brighter and took on a human form. I had in front of me the Lord Jesus Christ, whose, whose look was beautiful and full of love. On earth, I've never seen such beauty on a man's face. He came closer to each of my brothers. I was about to tell my brothers that the Lord came for me, and I started speaking in tongues. The Lord came closer to me. Just by looking at me, my, my spirit left my body. I was in the air, and I saw what was happening in my house. I saw people ringing my doorbell, and when my husband went to answer, two policemen were at the door. The policeman said, We heard that a lady died here. That's why we came. My husband told them no. Here we're here. We're here to worship and to praise the Lord. The policemen really didn't believe, but they couldn't enter. They said, okay, carry on, but do not make a lot of noise. I was in the air when I saw all of this. Jesus took me by my hands and we went towards the Dominican Republic. When we reached the city, the Lord told me, there are two great sins in this country that they commit before my father, witchcraft and idolatry. I saw the people of that country running after sorcerers and fetishes. After that, the Lord brought me to Venezuela and to Mexico. In Venezuela, I was in the air with Jesus, but I saw people turning to magic, fetishes, and to witchcraft. In Mexico, I saw people meeting and worshiping demons. The Lord told me, The horror of this sin has reached my father. The first sign I give as a warning is that there will be an earthquake in Mexico if the inhabitants of the country do not repent and come back to me. When I came back to the earth, I went to Mexico and gave the message. The people did not listen, and recently there was a terrible earthquake in Mexico. When we were still in the air, the Lord told me that the hands of his father had been stretched out upon the inhabitants of the earth. I saw the sea with gigantic waves resembling a monster. I also saw a hurricane happening on the earth. I asked the Lord, What will become of Christians when all this happens? He answered, Go and tell them that for those who are faithful to me, none of their hairs will be touched. After that, the Lord brought me to another place. I saw places where the earth was split. The Lord told me, Many countries will be soon wiped out. Then we left that place and went to another place where waters were in motion. We went by these waters through a tunnel and reached the depths of the earth. I saw great doors. It was not the same as those I saw during my first journey. On those doors were big chains. The Lord went towards the doors, and after he had removed the chains, he let me in through the tunnel. Dear brothers and sisters, I saw thousands of people with their heads down, t wearing torn clothes. They were chained with big chains whose noise could lead to, a, to deafness. Then I said, Lord, what does this all mean? He answered, All these men and women are on their way to hell. Among those who were on their way to hell, I saw my husband's older brother, Aldolfo. He was a difficult man. He used to get married and divorced whenever he wanted, and he used to curse God. Then I started pleading with the Lord to let me go back on the earth and warn Aldolfo that he was going to hell, but the Lord didn't answer me. Again, I saw Aldolfo and his wife walking through the tunnel. They were at the edge of hell. And I pleaded with the Lord again to let me back, go back to the earth and tell the people what I've seen. The Lord lifted his hands up and said, Go and tell them that time is nearly over. He said again, Thousands and thousands of people will go to hell. Aldolfo's time is over. He is going to die. When I came to the earth, my brother-in-law Aldolfo did not want to change his lifestyle. One day he quickly came home from work and said to his wife, I can't work any longer. Something is telling me that I'm going to die. His wife answered, It's because you're drunk as usual that you're saying this. Both of them went to bed. Some minutes later, she had a vision. In her vision, she saw her husband and she in a tunnel clothed with shabby clothes and going to hell. She heard the Lord telling her, Time for both of you is over. When I was still in the air, the Lord told me, do you know why I brought you here for a second time? It was to show you that during your first visit, the number of the lost was less than this time. Suddenly, Jesus and I left that place to the first heaven and then to the second heaven. 
When we reached the third heaven, I saw angels bustling from one side to the other. Then I asked the Lord, Why are these angels in motion? Jesus answered, It's true that my angels are in motion here, but I'm going to show you how the earth is also in motion. Be careful because many demons have invaded the earth. The devil is furious against Christians because he has little time left. The Lord allowed me to see those demons in horrible anger. He told me, Those demons you see are demons of adultery. They will attack thousands of my servants and they will fall. Many will fall into that sin. Do you know why the devil succeeds in causing my servants to fall? It is because my servants do not give me all the glory. They steal my glory and become proud. On top of that, their wives live in a great spiritual disorder. They did not build their homes with wisdom. I saw thousands of angels that I couldn't count. There were many of them ready for battle. Then Jesus told me, Now I'm sending these thousands of angels on the earth to protect my people. In these last days, I will double the protection for my children. Satan will also double his attacks, but you should not forget that your God is great and mighty. If you are attached to him, nothing will happen to you. The Lord then brought me to another place. There I saw a huge table rounded with golden chairs. On each chair a name was written, and a robe of fine linen was also placed. In front of each chair on the table I saw crowns. Then I noticed that there was a chair that was bigger than all the others. In front of that chair was a huge cup in gold. Jesus told me to go and see what was in the cup. It was full of wine ready to be served. Jesus told me, Do you know why the wine is ready to be served? Go and tell my people that I am at the door. I am coming soon. The Lord gave me a robe of fine linen and a crown. I wore the robe and crown. Then the Lord brought me to another place where I saw things like in a mirror. He told me, There is neither stain nor crease on your robe, is there? No one will enter through this door nor take their place at this table unless he or she is clothed like this. Some among my people on the earth have dirtied their robes. Others have crumpled robes, and still others have put their robes aside and have forgotten them. Tell my people that it's time they washed their robes, ironed them, and took them back. Christians should ask the Holy Spirit to help them keep their robes in good state, because the king will soon celebrate the marriage supper in his father's kingdom. I come from a divorced family, and I grew up with my father. My mother was a very religious woman. As for my father, he believed in nothing. I have a sister who is in a Catholic convent, but I know that Jesus will soon take her out of that and she will preach the gospel with me. I pray a lot for her. When I was thinking about my mother's life in that mystic religion during my first journey in paradise, I cried before the Lord and told him, Lord, my mother is lost. Yet I've preached the gospel to her, but she won't listen. More and more she's clung to that pagan religion. The Lord answered me, I will save your mother, but I will take her home immediately, otherwise she will fall back into sin and go to hell. For this reason, as soon as she is converted, she will die some time later and come here in paradise. When I came back on the earth, I prayed, cried, sighed, reminding the Lord the promise he gave me. But I saw my mother, who was more and more involved in the idolatry of her religion. One day, God used my son to convert my mother. Just three days after her conversion, she died. Praise the Lord. During my second journey in paradise, the Lord told me, Look what my mouth says. My hands fulfill it. My, I saw my mother in that beautiful paradise. She was among other women. Then the Lord led me in an area in the paradise. There I saw thousands of children clothed in white who were praising and glorifying the Lord. Jesus told me, these children are those who have been aborted by parents and criminal doctors, babies that people killed while they are still in their mother's womb and that are found in dustbins and rivers are here in heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, contrary to what you think, for the Lord, a fetus is a human being from conception, from the first day of pregnancy. Jesus told me again, Bernarda, work, for I am your strength. This message has to be published into the whole world. It's a message for Christians, pastors, and for all inhabitants of the earth, including you. Let him who is holy continue to be holy. 
At that moment, the gates of heaven were opened. There was a beautiful escalator. Jesus called thousands of angels who came, and then the Lord accompanied me to my home. When we got home, I saw my husband and the Christian brothers who were waiting for my spirit to come. I looked at my physical body that remained on the earth, and I told the Lord that I do not long any longer want this body. The Lord told me, You cannot go back to heaven with me, for it is not your time yet. You have to tell my people first what you saw in order for them to get ready. With a powerful voice, he told me, Enter and receive life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall yet live. You can read that in John 11, 25, 26. This is the end of the testimony.